Good morning to you, welcome aboard this Gavik Festival. This is down to Brighton, so it's called uh, Gavik Airport Overseas and the Brighton only. <laughs> Hello, welcome. In today's video, we look at a lens which gets an unfair rap. This is a 1930s vintage Leica lens. This is the Light Sumar 5cm f2 Leica Screwmat lens. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. Now, if you believe a lot of the information online, you'll read that the Leica Sumar lens is soft and rubbish, and so you're better to get the later Summer Tar lens. I did just that, and so some years ago I bought this Summer Tar. Now, more recently, I'm like, Let's just try the Sumar and see if it's any good. And I was pleasantly surprised. Okay, so what sort of pictures can you expect from a vintage 1930s lens? I'm going to test the lens on two different digital cameras, an M camera and an SL, and on film. First, lens sharpness. So this is me with my M240 in London, testing it on the way to a photo walk. And as you can see, if you crop in, you can get good sharpness, but there's also like a bit of glow around the detail. So you can tell it's not an ultra modern lens, but equally there is enough detail and especially in the center. Center crops, if you look here, they really are sharper than expected. <laughs> Even this pigeon pose for me, my model. And if you stop down, the sharpness obviously always improves that center sharpness. And compared to the latest Sumitar, my Sumar is actually sharper than the old lens. Here's an infinity sharpness test in the center. Again, my Sumar is sharper than my Sumitar which was quite surprising. <laughs> and at the edges, the Sumar was again much sharper than the Sumitar. If we zoom in on this photo, you can see this little bird. This is wide open F2. You've got enough sharpness and a cool little bokeh as well. You may not realize, but the Light's Sumar lens was the first fast 50mm lens from Leica. Followed the Sumar came the Sumitar, and that was available in the 10 blade and then later six blade. And then finally the Summicron, which is what we now know today. Okay, so this is me now shooting on film, cropping in, you can see there's tons of sharpness and at the edges you get that lovely kind of like a glow, the famous like a glow. Here in the center, you can see the detail on the lens on the crop versions. But if we compare it to a sharp 1950s lens, this is the Canon 50 1.8 on the left. If we crop in, you can see the Canon is a lot sharper when it comes down to the final details. Here you can see the Canon 50 1.8 on my Leica 2F. The next colors, as you know, I normally shoot black and white, but here are some colours unedited from my Leica M240. Great colours from that camera. And here are some colours from my SL, raw on the left, and then my edited black and whites on the right. As you can see, because it's a vintage lens, you get that desaturated look, maybe a more filmic colour look, which I'm sure some people will like. It's lower contrast, lower saturation compared to a modern lens. Okay, next, vignetting. You can see this lens does vignette at wider apertures. You'll see it more in the next example. Here you can see f2 and f2.2, a lot of vignetting, but it's pretty much gone by, say, 4.5. Lens bokeh. So if you shoot this lens wide open, you get really, really nice creamy bokeh at both f2 and f2.2. You can see the swirl compared to the Summitar. It's almost identical to the bokeh of the Summitar at the wider apertures. It's once you stop down that the bokeh characteristics change and you start to see hexagonal bokeh on the Sumar. So this is a scimitar. You can see it's the old version with the 10 blades to get round bokeh at all apertures. Compared to, per, compare that to the old Sumar. You can see it's only six blades, so you get hexagonal bokeh from around 3.2 onwards. So not the best once you stop down. What about lens glow? As you can see from the early examples, this lens will glow from kind of bright points of light. Uh, I think it gives a nice vintage look, but don't be kind of scared of shooting towards the light because you can get clean looking shots as you saw from some of those. Lens flare. This lens is much, much better with the lens hood as you will get flare from an uncoated lens. That being said, in real life examples, I didn't really see any flare once I was using a lens hood. I was using a telescopic lens hood as I did a recent video on and I was also using a standard lens hood from a, a Typoc lens which I still need to make a video on. Talking of Typoc lenses, so here you can see three collapsible 50mm f2 lenses. Two vintage, the Sumar and the Sumitar, both 1930s and then the other one on the table is a brand new Typoc. Video to come, feel free to subscribe. So you can see the Sumar is smaller than the Sumitar and it's also lighter and it's got a smaller uh, filter size which means it's the same size as the A36 push-on size of the Typoc 
which makes it it's really nice kind of compact size and it means the filters from the Typoc, the nine centimeter Elmar, the uh, 3.5 uh, Leica old lens, all of those take the same A36 push on caps and push on filters. They can see the filters. So it's really nice to carry one set of filters for a variety of lenses. Okay, what about the actual lens spec? So originally made from 1932 to 1939, it came in nickel or chrome finishes. Originally it was rigid and then the, after that they're all collapsible. So six elements in four groups, a stigmat lens design with the six aperture blades, straight blades, hence the hexagonal. It's an uncoated lens, but some are later coated and it's in like a screw mount. Close focus distance of one meter. It's got a clickless aperture and it only weighs 176 grams, which I say is lighter than the scimitar that came later and the simicron that came after the scimitar. It's also got the infinity stop, as you see there. OK, let's look at some example photos on film. So I went to Brighton for a photo shoot. So I was interested to try out my various cameras and lenses on the way. So this is me shooting with the lovely Sophie. If you want to get the details and link it below, she's a UK kind of full time model. And you can see me there using the 1934 Leica 3 model F with the Sumo and the extended lens hood to give me the best kind of contrast in the bright conditions on Brighton Beach. Although I think the sun had gone in during that clip. So these are shots at f2 and you can see the, the nice fall off in the background. I think they were with the red filter, hence the, the darker darks, uh, like the darker blue tones. I then swapped the lens to the SL. So that was it for film from that photo shoot. But I did then do a run the next morning. Day two. So I set my alarm for 6 a.m. to get out on the beach for some low directional light. I had my running kit on and then I just carry my like a three camera in like a webbed belt around my waist so it's easy to carry these small cameras. I was using red and yellow filters and I had the Sumar. I also had the hood in my belt as well for when needed. The sun was behind me for this shot so I didn't need the, the lens hood. Here you can see the sharpness but you can also see there's a hole in my shutter. At some point I managed to burn a hole in my shutter. I think it was on my desk at home and the sun comes through in the morning and I stupidly managed to burn the hole as you can see there but I have tried to fix it I'll show you that as we get into the video had great fun at low tide so I was able to get under the pier and photograph the swimmers as you saw there. It was then time to run along the promenade until I got to the building at the end. That building as you can see there, I'm not sure what it's called. And then it was time to head back to get some breakfast. Once I checked out I used the Leica SL for a few more digital photos using the Sumar and then I fitted the lens to my Leica 2F, my other digital camera, because I'd finished the roll on the first camera. Luckily this camera doesn't have a light leak so the photos are slightly cleaner looking. Here, all these photos again shot with the Sumar. I have stopped down to maybe 5.6 f8 for some of these to get a bit more detail. I quite like the overhead look, and I even managed to get this uh, fast moving seagull with a vintage rangefinder camera. So it's surprising what's possible. Had some fun on the beach trying to do, use different compositions with the deck chairs to try to make a pleasing looking photo. I might print one of these in a dark room. Now, these photos are all shot with foam and panel 100 film. Some photos have got little black dots all over them you'll see it there like on the seagull photo i'm not sure what that is i don't think i've seen that before with fresh film so if you know what that is please comment below i'll be interested uh, again photos are shot a lot with the red filters or yellow filters so they've got a bit more contrast than you might no normally get here's another photo shoot this time in london in regent's park so this is with the lovely asher i will share the full behind the scenes video on patreon if you're interested in model photography or trying to get better at your lighting and things I specialise in black and white female portraiture, so this is kind of what I do. This is my, my main interest. Here you can see my setup with the awesome Asher, and you can see I'm really close, and I'm still using the Sumar lens, and this is film, so it's like, how is he doing this? 
Here you can see my simple lighting setup and cameras. And if you've not yet got it, you can get my free model photography guide in the link below. It should help you finding models. So once you've found a model, you then need to learn how to light. You can see that on Patreon and the full model book is also coming. So stay tuned for that. You can see me testing with the digital camera. And then as soon as something looks good, I'm like, wait, then I'll shoot the same thing with either the Hasblad or the Leica 3 camera and normally both. You can see I've got the light meter around my neck and you will see a full video on the digital camera photos to come because I was using a different lens. So how did I get so close? So as I said, this Sumo lens has got a one meter close focus distance. However, Leica made a special uh, tool which allowed you to focus closer. This is called the Nookie Hessem adapter and it allows you to mount the lens onto this close focus adapter and then you can focus maybe around 0.5 meters. Don't quote me on that, but it's roughly about that. So to fit the lens, you need to use the inner bayonet screwed into the Nookie Hessem adapter. You then attach it as so. And you need to make sure that the windows line up, because otherwise it's not going to work. So it works on like a three cameras except the 3G and it won't work on like an M cameras. You need to use different close focus adapters for M cameras. I have done videos on close focus adapters, so you see that. They can see the focusing and now I'm probably got maybe 0.7 to 0.5 meter close focus and they can see the close focus on the on the example there and that's the result. <laughs> so you, for me, if you're doing kind of tight headshots, it's invaluable to be able to get that a little bit closer. And the problem with most vintage lenses is they normally have a one meter close focus distance. So you miss that kind of uh, tight crops. To try to repair the shutter curtain, I use a liquid rubber electrical tape. Uh, I have done a video on this in the past because I did the same to my Lycra M3. Check out that video. One coating wasn't enough, so now I've applied three coatings and hopefully that will fix it. If you need a small light meter to go to on the top of your camera, I've just picked up this KEKS -E light meter. It's really small and I love the fact that it matches my black paint camera. I can put a link to load to the KEKS -E website if you're interested. Okay, so here's some digital photos that I mentioned earlier. Now back in Brighton with the Sumar. So on digital, you can get some fantastic kind of more interesting than normal photos because the softer lens gives you a more kind of vintage rendering. And so you don't get that kind of nasty digital sharpness that you get from modern lenses where the high micro contrasts and sharpness and the multi-coated lenses just make it just too sharp for kind of interesting images. So I love this on digital. So what is the final verdict? I absolutely love this lens. I think the Leica Sumar 5cm f2 is a brilliant lens which got an unfair bad rap. Because these lenses were made in the 1930s and older glass tends to be softer and so you get scratched more easily. It's very easy to find bad copies on eBay and I think that's why they get such a bad rap of being very glowy and very soft. If you can find yourself a clean sumo lens, I found it sharper in the center and at the edges than the later Sumatar. And forum users have also said that it's as sharp as the later Summicron collapsible that came years later. So very good optics, especially in the center. It has got curvature, so the edges are always softer. I think it pairs really nicely on these Leica 3 cameras. I like the smaller size and smaller weight and the fact that it takes the A36 filters. And yeah, you're going to be seeing more from this lens. If you want to see more from my photo shoots, feel free to join Patreon below. As always, a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. I can put a link to the Summer Tar video next.